one. Okay, cool. Okay. You guys, thank you for being here. Welcome Ooh. to the Moon Show. We had a wild what that one? Okay. Okay. We had a wild wild last thirty five minutes mm -hmm. um, in the studio. Yeah. As, as always, but we're good to go. So this is Molly Fletcher, Hello. amazing violinist, artist, performer, uh, musician, and I'm Lane. Josh is over there. Ryan's behind the cameras. Hannah's upstairs in the loft, and we're ready to rock this joint. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit. We're gonna learn a little bit about Molly. We're gonna play some games. Replace we're gonna yep. hear some music. <laughs> <laughs> Our blood pressure is boiling right now, so we're gonna. I know, but I'm very take warm. Take it down a notch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, no matter how many times you prepare, sometimes things just. <laughs> happen you but know the show must go on the show must go on always okay yeah. okay sips um this is vodka no, straight vodka <laughs> <laughs> so uh molly cool we've um known each other for a number of years now where mm. did we meet probably the eighth floor of nyu <laughs> i think so yep Music tech floor. Mm -hmm. um, it's where my locker was. And you were studying classical violin. Performance, yeah. Okay. And I double majored in psychology. I did not know that. Explains a lot, though. <laughs> so how would you describe your musical project that you're doing right now? Um, um, well, it's part, it's a, the next installment of Reverie. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I just, you know, I'm having the, taking the looping, meditative, zend out, cool vibes to the next level. <laughs> so it sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. I haven't even heard many of these new ones. We did a test run live a week ago just to make sure everything started uh on time and obviously that went really yeah. well so it could <laughs> have been worked a week ago right it could have been showtime yeah it could have been worse i guess but so we we did your record your first record like uh two years ago around yes it came out in april of 2019 okay yeah so, so just we about. yeah we worked um, on it for a little while and your background is in classical music mm -hmm. but you have been if anybody watching doesn't know molly's an extremely accomplished touring violinist you've toured around the world with like kaigo and uh clean bandit clean bandit some big international mutual acts benefit in the pop world yeah yeah so can you talk about how that's like those those are like polar opposite musics and uh crowds and right. demographics and everything right. how how is that like how does that work mentally when you have a background in classical music you've been training in like conservatory playing in orchestras right and then you tour and you're like in front of like arenas of yeah. people cheering for uh pop yeah artists. so i think i think so yeah so i love all types of music i grew up listening to so many different types of music and so i kind of fell in love with like just music in general um but classical music gives you a really solid foundation technique wise um i think how you approach the instrument in general um and then that you know pop music and other it, it technically it's very opposite but at the same time there's a lot that's similar um and i think that like what um I don't know when you play violin in these other non-classical forms like the more you bring of the classical background to that it makes it stronger so mm -hmm. being able to f be in feel rhythm in a particular way working with intonation being able to follow singers like singers do their own thing most of the time so <laughs> you gotta be as a violin you have to you often operate as a voice so mm. you have to kind of be able to weave in and out of that so being able to manipulate pitch well um you know bow technique all those things um it really kind of feeds into making it easier to play you know i think having a strong classical background makes it much easier to play just and and also thinking about structure so mm. um you know memorizing an entire concerto i've memorized probably 
m- tons of them, but like being able to memorize that and then go and then do like a pop song, like you can definitely like use those tools to yeah help you. That was my when I was a young wee lad playing yeah. piano. That was my worst thing. I was technically okay. Yeah, but I would do these recitals, and these were for like thirty people, and they're all moms and dads right and grandparents and i would just when it came to memorizing yeah. the whole piece i would just freeze up right it's yeah. so it's so nerve memorization I, d- I definitely is very visual i think i approach music in general in a very visual way and i think you'll hear that when i play mm-hmm. um but i think memorize memorization i memorize like a structure of a piece and a and a whole arc of the whole thing so wherever I'm at, like I can find, I can find it in that, in that arc. So you think like high level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very... like an overall. And then I'll also memorize like where I am on the page so I can, like, I can mm-hmm. still see specific sections of like where it, it exists on the page and it kind of helps you like pace yourself. Wow. And it's like stamina, stamina when you're playing is a big deal. It's like photographic memory. Yeah. Realm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting when you said um, that knowing that having a classical background informs the way that you perform mm-hmm. in the pop world. Mm-hmm. It made me think, okay, is that because when someone uses violin, say, or any string instrument uh, in that pop context, do you think that the reason for that is because it's like it's referencing? the classical that we it came from like the roots and the origins of that texture it, yeah it, it could i think it depends on who's writing sure. i think you know some people are extremely well very knowledgeable on how to write for stringed instruments mm-hmm. i mean you, it, it kind of like runs again but i think i think that um uh i lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> yeah i but it it, it um some people are referencing that yeah, sound. Yeah, Sometimes yes. it's yeah. Some people new are referencing it. Some people aren't. But I think that you know, music in general from the beginning of time has always built on itself. And I think in the last, you know, you know yeah. in the as things as we had got recorded music, you know, and we got all that, you know, building and bands, all that stuff. The birth of all these different genres, the kind of you know, when you look at the history of music in general, it's super interesting how, mm-hmm. you know, you can find Gregorian chants. I was talking about this just the other last week with mm-hmm. James the composer, but with mm-hmm. how Gregorian chants influence James. Yeah. Uh, how that influences, you know, pop music and pop writing. Yeah. So it's cool. It's like that, like Wikipedia six degrees of separation game yeah. where you can like yeah. find if you start with what is it six degrees of kevin bacon you start with anything and if you with six clicks you can always get to kevin bacon oh weird (laughs) i don't know if that's true or not but (laughs) apparently it's 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 possible yeah um so before we get to the music we're gonna listen to some music soon yes um but bringing that conversation into your music Mm -hmm. your backgrounds in classical you've played all this pop music Mm -hmm. How do you think you arrive at the type of music we're going to hear soon, which is, I, I'd probably describe it as kind of like it, it's, it's somewhere in the neoclassical realm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it has the the vibe of classical music, but it also is catchy. It also has like memorable melodies and hooks. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like, you know, the fact that it's, kind of loop based mm-hmm. is very now right very 21st century right right how do you think you arrived there instead of just like doing a right you know going down the path of being a, a violin soloist for um orchestras? well i think that um so I, I i feel like i work well in melodies like i've always kind of had melodies pop into my head i will make little songs out of just my daily activities kind of i don't know um but i i like love in your head, you're just like yeah. doing errands and humming. yeah okay. like whatever um so <laughs> i love working with melody so that's that kind of influence you know and i think the violin does that but anyway i feel like i got to this because um making very like emotional cinematic thing music like that's mm-hmm. just kind of like where i where i tend to go so yeah. i feel like 
um with looping i love the idea of looping because i you know mozart used looping a lot in naturally like he'll repeat phrases multiple times Mm. and why it's repeated the second time it's not the same reason why it was introduced and like how that how that changes and i think that grandmaster mozart yeah grandmaster mozart (laughs) oh (laughs) gee so i think like as you build i like the idea of building on itself because i feel like i do that just in my life and i feel like we do that as humans but um building and and uh and then just kind of creating something emotional and like you know violin music i i also wanted to create something accessible Mm -hmm. um and get people that maybe aren't totally down to listen to like a beethoven sonata which you totally should um (laughs) Shout to out <laughs> to then you know be like oh make it like approachable in in that way so yeah. very interesting that's when i play the record that we did together for people the by far the first thing people say is wow this sounds like a film score yeah it sounds like it could be yeah the you know uh in a drama and yeah or, you know i think that's really interesting because like why what does that even mean like the the fact that we can listen to music and then associate it with video or our like history or knowledge of film mm-hmm. it's, that's pretty cool it's so cool. F- to have done something that people then associate with the lexicon of of uh film music right i think that's a big compliment yeah maybe thank you um <laughs> and i didn't say it well <laughs> to them um okay cool so what are you gonna play for us today um i'm gonna play a a few songs i'm gonna play two from reverie um and then i'm gonna play three of the new ones um one of them i like i've been learning production and getting super into home recording studio the production all that stuff so i over the past year yeah because of something but um (laughs) will not be named (laughs) so like one of them i'm i I, i'm trying to incorporate these different ideas but one of them like i'm using like a a drum that i put into the track i'm i have it inside the looper right now this is new uncharted so it's like you know it's using different uh, because i want to build upon like instruments being incorporated but you know just me right now so okay yeah so you'll see some you'll see some of that but cool all right well we're gonna be back in a flash a second and with uh with some music by molly fletcher
everybody. We're gonna start out with two songs from Reverie, Train to Osaka, and then we'll go into Lucid Dreaming. Woo! <laughs> up here guys <laughs> oh. so lucid dreaming i wrote this first this was the first one that i ever like wrote the melody all of those things and um i feel like my dreams have influenced my life in so many different ways it sounds corny but i just feel like they i work through things they leave me feeling different ways whatever whatever but yeah so this is
I think we're gonna hop back in and do some more. Let's play a game. Some getting to know me <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a second. In a second. Okay, so Loose we've, and everything. Yeah, I know. Out. Well, we've played a lot of games before, <laughs> so this is going to be... <laughs> this is no Jenga. No, not Jenga. <laughs> okay. Are we Are we live? We're live? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. It, this is just... It's just so interesting. Like, when preparing for a performance, I'm thinking of four million things having to do with... Uh, performance yeah, like yeah. Last and and, February, you, and you know and with my with my looping stuff I'm I'm I've all these pieces I, I all the things that go into the different layers and where I go and when I stomp and whatever <laughs> um so now adding in the kind of like live uh -huh. aspect it's just like it's like it's like a lot yeah yeah it is a lot it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> <laughs> but a lot it's good we're making it work yeah right? you, you uh -huh. know you gotta um um I don't know what to say to that. It's a lot, guys. It's a lot. But we're, it's a lot, it's a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everyone being here. Yeah. So that was amazing. As Thank always, you. that was one of the most amazing performances I've heard ever. Because, I mean, it sounds... Wow, thank you. A little you. bit better than Mercury Lounge here in this Yeah, studio. it does sound better than Mercury Lounge here, but shout out to Mercury Lounge. I kind of miss it. I, I miss that box. I so miss Mercury Lounge. I miss that box and those low ceilings. Like, I cannot wear heels mm -hmm. in that venue because my bow will hit the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I can't tell if you're joking or not. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> if they, they got low ceilings. And Mercury Lounge sound is surprisingly not, you know... It's, it surprises me sometimes. Yeah, it's good. I've, play, I've played shows there where, like, I, I might as well not have been playing because you couldn't hear it. And then, you oh. know, the the show last August mm -hmm. was or August and a half ago, whatever. It was August sounded and great. A half ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Shout out every live venue in New York. We hope you're going to be back very soon. Um, we have some games 
that I haven't read any of these prompts yet. Uh, our intern, our amazing intern slash production assistant slash um, stylist slash pet su plants plant mom decorator uh, Hannah has come up with some over under prompts and some would you rather prompts. All right. So, which do you want to start with? I, uh... Would you rather? Would you rather? Would you rather is a great tour game <laughs> as well. So um, our hope is that this helps everybody get inside the mind of Molly Fletcher. Oh, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not where we want to be. <laughs> well, that's for you to decide. Um, so number one, would you rather always have food between your teeth or have constant BO? Oh, <laughs> Like my bio? I think it no. would be your okay. as opposed to I like, like somebody I, else's bio we'll just, rubbed off on you. I think my, my bio. Well, I'll do the bio one because I don't have that. I'm not super. I see what you're saying. This is a humble brag. You're saying you don't have your <laughs> bio not, smells like it's roses. It's not super. It's I could I could deal with it. You could see you could deal with always having bio mm -hmm. because you know you could deal with next it. question okay. would you rather travel the world for free for a year or have fifty thousand dollars to spend however you please um <laughs> oh fifty thousand dollars spent um well assuming that touring comes back i'll take the 50 grand because then i'll okay. tour I'll, I'll tour i'll tour got it okay um okay this this is a um uh, string for all of our string players in the audience. Okay. This one, this one's for you. Okay. Would you rather have your sound post fall down? Okay. Or your bridge pop out? Okay. In the middle of a performance, I'm assuming. Uh, uh okay. Um, I, I'll, I'll take the bridge for sure the because bridge. a sound post, you guys, the sound post is the thing inside of the violin. No one really sees it, and not oh. many people know about it unless you're. Mm -hmm. For the, that's a deep right, cut. right. So if you, if you mm. mess up your sound post, like your violin could be dead forever. Just cave in on if itself. it's a if it's a bridge. I've actually yeah. popped. I when I was a little girl, I popped my bridge out in the bathtub once because I took my violin into the bathtub with me. <laughs> my mom was like, "What?" I think a lot of us can relate to that story, Molly. Like, I, and it popped out. I also okay. fell on my bridge once and popped it out, but. Got it. That's and more that, manageable. Every, you're still here. You're alive. Your violin's I'm alive. alive. Good. So that's we'll take that one. Okay. okay. Uh, would you rather have invisibility capabilities okay. <laughs> or the ability to read minds? Um. Hmm. Uh, uh, ooh, I don't know. Maybe inv invisibility. Why? Because I don't think I want to know what everyone thinks. Yes. Yeah, I Amen. Yeah. Um, okay. Another spooky one. Would you rather be eternally haunted by a ghost or become a ghost tomorrow and eternally haunt someone? I feel like I... Now I'm going to sound... I'm gonna go, now we're really getting in my mind. I feel sure. like the ghost the one... one I feel like I already... like Sometimes the ghost stuff... Uh -huh. Ghost stuff... Yeah. I feel like I already have Paranormal. a connection with that stuff. Oh, okay. So I never knew that. So, <laughs> just saying. I will keep that um, in mind. No, so I feel like maybe I'll take the. I'll take. No, actually, I think I would be interested in haunt, but I don't want to die now. So yeah, that's not, I feel like I will take the ghost for now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. One more. Okay, one more. Uh, would you rather. Have a rewind or a pause button in your life. That's a good one. Just Hannah, in that's general, my favorite. That one's good. Just, in, <laughs> just forever? Or for, like I could use the pause whenever? Yes. You could use, you could press the pause button on life. Everything it's stops. That's what we just did. Uh, uh, maybe I'll take, I'll a, take rewind. a rewind. I'll take a rewind. There's, I've had some. <laughs> you want to redo? No, no, just a rewind and replay because I've had mm. just some incredible experiences in my life and I am so grateful to them and I often replay them in my mind. Okay. Um, a pause button, I definitely feel like we tested that out the last year. Mm. Yeah, we kind of did have a yeah. pretty long so. pause button. Okay. All right. Thank cool. you. Okay. Um, that 
that's it for would you rather moving right along to over under okay this is going to be fast paced fast paced getting through this and then um, overrated underrated yeah right? so you okay. just pick overrated or underrated okay based on on this thing All right. so we're gonna okay. fly through them brunch overrated overrated okay calling people boss Oh, uh, I think that's underrated. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. What up, boss? Like, in the bodega, when you're mm. like, what up, boss? Can I get a bacon, egg, and cheese? I always say, honestly, like, that's, that's when the you, time I say it the most in the bodega. That's when you use the, the word bodega. boss is when you're getting a bacon, egg, and cheese. What's up, boss? What's up, boss? What's your deli order, by the way? Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. I had one this morning. Ketchup? No. Hot sauce? Sometimes. Okay. Valentine's Day. Oh, I, I like Valentine's Day. I wouldn't. I think it's a little overrated, though. Okay. Yeah. Meditation. Underrated. The moon. <laughs> Under no. Well. <laughs> um. The, I underrated. Careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> underrated. Underrated. Yeah. Okay. Cars. Um. Depending on the car, some of them are overrated, but mm. there's some that people don't know about that are kind of under. Well, whatever. Okay. The Beatles. Oh, this one's so polarizing. Mm. Um, I I appreciate the... Be they're definitely not underrated. Sometimes they're overrated. You can say properly rated if you'd like. Properly rated. Okay. I, I Not to I, force your hand or anything. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, this one's spicy. Young Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what young Joe Biden looks like. You don't? No. Oh, you're missing out, girl. No. Babies. Oh, I think... Oh, I, <laughs> I think that Sorry, said I, it all. I, I, <laughs> okay. I think, okay, well, what I will say is sometimes people, when you don't know the baby and they won't stop talking about the baby, sometimes mm. you're like, okay, the baby's great. Love the baby. Love the baby. But shut up. Shut right, up about exactly. the baby. The okay. talking, the, not necessarily the baby, but the baby banter. Baby banter. Is, baby banter is often overrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me. Um, <laughs> Steely Dan properly rated recycling uh properly rated yeah <laughs> we need to recycle airpods oh uh, those are great i i, I <laughs> like not the question molly <laughs> <laughs> overrated though okay yeah carson daly oh carson daly's forever g like mm -hmm. yeah we like him t uh, trl trl like total request live and actually yeah. the last live show that i ever played carson daly was there because it was the today show oh, with wow. louis tomlinson and we did it and carson daly was there and i remember seeing him in person mm -hmm. and being like oh my god like i would watch trl after school came on at like 3 30 every mm -hmm. day channel 23 <laughs> mtv mtv yep. and like i loved trl so carson seeing him there and like playing on the and him introducing louis tomlinson while we played was like sure. so like full circle moment so. i'm also glad that uh we're talking about carson daly because um as much of a shit show this was when we started i think he has an even worse <laughs> late night show <laughs> Which he has the worst. I don't think it airs anymore. Oh, I hope I, not. I, my, one of my <laughs> bands back in the day was on Late Night with Carson Daly. I think oh. he, he played our music video like in 2014, I think. Well, that's cool that he did yeah. that. Yeah. I take it back. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. That was a great show. Uh, almond milk. <laughs> um, well, I can't eat, have nuts, so. Is that right? Yeah. I forgot about that. Any yeah. nut? I think like cashews are okay, but mm. almonds like, yeah. and yeah. All right. Uh, Jesus Christ. Let's not. Yeah, we're Should not... we? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turning the tables. Friends with pools. <laughs> oh, always. Those are great. I love friends with pools. So. Underrated. Underrated. Because um... having a pool is a lot of work. Okay. But, but having a friend with a pool. Great awesome uh water don't know what to say that one under uh, overrated forever <laughs> it's good properly rated <laughs> okay last one physical exercise under well no it's pretty hyped up mm -hmm. properly rated i think physical exercise is key okay great thank you cool we're gonna hear some more music All right, what, yeah, we're what's gonna, next we're gonna play um things i never told you 
new one. We're going to go with the two new ones right now. Mm-hmm. The last three actually are all new. Are, are we going to do three now or two now? Because I have three more. Let's hear them all. Let's hear them all. So we're going to do Things I Never Told You. Okay. That's um, a new, new That's tune. a new one. Uh, so recorded. We're going to get that out to you guys soon. Uh, Joyride, which is the new one with the drum. And then True Colors, which is just super fun. So we'll do awesome. that. Awesome. Okay. We'll we'll crank out these last three thong- songs. See you in a sec. This is the first time I've played with in-ears with this. I mean, obviously I've played with in-ears before, but this is my first time playing it with my looping. With the pedals? With Ever? the pedals, yeah. Wow. Well, I did it. I practiced it, but what? usually I use headphones or time. actually I use a monitor, but whatever. Amazing. Okay. Things I never told you. Thank you. 
Joyride. I wrote this song this summer. And yeah. <laughs> summer. That was this summer. This last summer. That was last summer. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about time. Okay. Thank you. 
think we're gonna play we I <laughs> me and my my team here the last song and um, thank you guys so much for being here I think may maybe we'll I'll pop on with Lane after this last song but thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and hanging out in the chat room which I heard is popping off <laughs> <laughs> Word on the street. Word on the street. Um, and um, yeah, it really means a lot. Thank you guys so much. Okay. <clears throat> this song is called True Colors. And it's about seeing... Uh, a lot of times when people say they see someone's true colors, it's like a negative thing. But I feel like this is kind of reclaiming that and finding the true colors in people that are beautiful and amazing as well as inside yourself. So, yeah. And in the world around us. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was my sh my shoes didn't like fully hit the pedal. So I'm okay. Here's the thing. I was thinking about the mic and I didn't want the the shoe to be too loud. Can so I was like gently it touching it Can and it you didn't. Tell us what it is? Yeah. So I have three channels here, and starts and stops and stuff. But these pedals are very sensitive. So I like to play with boots because it helps with the pedals. But at the same time, you have to actually you have to you have to really give it a push. You gotta stomp it. Yeah, you can't you can't do a gentle a gentle push, which that's what I did. It didn't it didn't hit. Anyway, all right.
Let's do it.
Thank you, Molly. That was incredible. We are so grateful to have you here. Thank uh, you for having me. Sound amazing as always. Thank um, you. We're gonna ask our audience. Ask the audience for some questions. Anybody yeah. have any questions? Yeah. Does anybody have Put any questions? Put them in the chat. We got in the chat. YouTube and we got Instagram Live. So yeah. What do you guys want to know? Um. This is why we do a live. Yeah. This so, is so exciting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they want to know. Has go through. Has anybody said anything? I saw. Do you often play in heels? That's a great question. I love playing in heels. I don't like to play in very large heels if I'm doing like uh like uh December 2019 I played Brooke Concerto with Chelsea Symphony and that I wore very low shoes cuz it just it sometimes it could get my balance off this is about yeah but if I'm if I'm not playing classical music then I'm more likely to wear heels I've Have definitely you ever performed in, in lots of oh of course like okay. a million like on platforms and <laughs> heels like every uh, on moving platforms I did this show in uh, Los Angeles where we were on these like um like 15 foot foot ladders that were that the dancers were moving us around Whoa. me and one other violinist and so I was up on this moving platform <laughs> in heels and this whole thing it was really cool wow there's a video okay yeah. we'll check that out we'll put that in the chat <laughs> yeah okay so yeah Jenga or Uno? Jenga or, or Uno. Uno. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe Jenga because like Uno, the last time I played it, I just really couldn't get it. Like it was like I the wild cards, like mm. what was considered wild and what was just like a cool looking card and if you pass or not. But I was also really, really hot when I played it. So okay. I'm not sure if and I had banged my head. So <laughs> <laughs> So this might have been slightly concussion uh, in, induced um, that was like, confusion yeah. about the I like, game. Jenga's cool. Mm. Jenga's cool. Okay. So okay. Uno, a little too advanced. Yeah, <laughs> too advanced for me. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. Jenga. Did we get any other cool questions? What else you guys got? Mm. How often will you be doing this? That's a great question. Um, every Friday at 7 p.m., not me though not molly every week but molly is coming back in two weeks from today yep. with our friend b yep dj b dj honey extraordinaire b. honey b we're gonna do a cool duo 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 live set that we've been developing you have yeah. we've been, been developing on it? yeah yeah amazing She's... i don't think i've ever heard a live set with a dj and violin yeah I'm so excited yeah, it's fun it's fun cool all right what else you guys got in the chat there's like 29 of you out there i, I know, know you guys have some burning questions for us <laughs> for molly i'm just the messenger <laughs> all right anything up there she says thank you for sharing your music oh thank you phrase, yeah. wow well, okay. well it's great to be back <laughs> <laughs> um well we are so happy to have you back and uh can't wait for oh oh, oh. Incoming. Christopher Ray would like to know, what's the story of your violin? Where you Chris. get it and how long have you had it? Oh, what a great, great question, question from Chris. For those who couldn't hear, um, Christopher said, what's the story of your violin? Uh, where did you get it and how long have you had it? Okay, so my violin is a French made in 1899. Um, French, it was, it was made in Paris uh, by Colin Mazin. And I got it, oh my gosh, I got it uh, many years ago. A while back. A while back. Um, and it's definitely like a part of me. I, if I'm not, if I don't have my violin with me, like I sometimes, I get kind of like anxious. Um, I've witnessed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of anxiety yeah, as like, there's any kind of if there's, if, separation yeah, there's between any separa you and if there's the not, If there's any non-controlled separation, I get anxiety. It's yeah. like, um, but no, it's it's uh, it's it's from France, and I I wish it was it was made in 1899. So I really wish I knew, like, who played it before, mm -hmm. where, what concert, like, what music was played on it. Um, I mean, I've taken it around uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, I took it back to Paris. And wow. I, it, there's a, there's actually an inscription on the inside with the address. So I took it back to that address of where the luthier had, 
had at oh my gosh. Had, they had made it it's obviously and something what was there it's something different now but um <laughs> Did you talk to them? No, no, no. It's not even like it was just the address. It it Mm. was not not affiliated with the violin in any way at that point. But it was just cool to kind of like take it back. Yeah. Back there. Back home. Back. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Chris Chris is super smart. Chris is Chris is really smart. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) James Shepard. James Shepard. James Shepard. What's your favorite string on the violin? Wow. Uh, my G string. G string is a Mm -hmm. favorite string. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's Josh on the decks back Josh, there. Shout out to Josh for <laughs> handling all of the sound tech stuff. He's anyway, fast. He's fast. He's fast. Fast fingers. Funny, y'all. Um, <laughs> so the G string, my lower register has a very... Just like, so people know, is the G string the lowest yeah, string the on the G violin? Yeah, the G string is the, okay. the lowest one. Um, I like I like the sound that it makes. I like I like the, the tone of... of, of yeah, I, I like playing on the G string. My violin really comes alive there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Great question. Shout out to James Shepard. Yeah, thank James you, James. And uh, and Daphne always are going to be joining us next week. Next week, James and Daphne. For our moon show. Also, we don't really have a name for this yet. So if anybody has any good ideas, put them in our Instagram or message us, whatever. We yeah. need a name for this show. Yeah, we do. Um, so, yeah, keep brainstorming out there. Yeah. You got one? Oh, um, who are your pe- favorite people to perform with from Heath? Keith, Keith, Keith. Um, Thank you, Keith. What up, Keith? Um, oh man, I I think I'm gonna answer this question a little bit more, uh, like big picture, and I like performing with people that are w- w- just as passionate about the performance as I am. People that are ready to perform and give their all and give their best. Like, p- playing in an orchestra, playing on stage, playing pop bands, whatever. Like, if everybody's not 100% there, it comes out in the performance and it's just, like, not fun at all. So, yeah. when you play with a group, it's, like, I like playing with people that are all in. Passionate people. Passionate Leave people. Leave it all on the stage. Leave it all on the stage. Love that. Okay. We, and we got time for two more questions. Two more questions. All right, coming from Raul Garcia. Raul! Raul. Do you ever imagine words for your songs? Oh, good question. Do you ever imagine words for your songs? Um. No. <laughs> No, um, I imagine colors, I imagine feelings, shapes, um, memories, um, like mm. all that stuff, but I, I can't wow. say that I really think in words. L- l- lyrical writing for me is not my strong suit at all. Um, I think writing in general is like, like songwriting is uh, lyrically, it's like really amazing the way that singers and stuff can can really use words in such a really cool way i've had the opportunity to work with some amazing songwriters and lyricists and Mm -hmm. i'm always blown away at their ability to like you know shape things with with words but that's not i'm not good at it but i don't know i mean it's funny because when i think of titles when i think of the titles for my songs that comes like immediately Mm-hmm. So and that, those are words. Do you think you'll ever work with a lyricist or a songwriter yeah. in your musical? Yeah, I think career? it's coming. I'm that some of the I'm working on my own vocals a little bit, mm. which is very new, and wow. I'm like, I'm I'm easing into it because I'm, um, I get nervous about it, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. Yeah, and that's yeah. great words of encouragement for young musicians i mean often in a more pop world you know it can be it can feel like you need to be a a wordsmith always Mm -hmm. but there's so many different roles that you can do that be involved in the music yeah and Um, and 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 on that more of like not having words in my songs i think mm -hmm. sometimes as a violinist uh and one push for making this project was the fact that i wanted to you know, a lot of times violinists are backing up a vocalist and backing things up. And I wanted to show that it can be it stand on its own and be, you know, tell you a story without necessarily saying the story verbally. Sure. And just leaning into your strong suit mm-hmm. is such a great lesson. I think you do that wonderfully because you. you 
play the heck out of the violin and, <laughs> and that's what we that's what you do so yeah why not yeah. um okay last question any more uh somebody really wants you to play fire island Oh my gosh, wow. so Fire Island is a deep cut from quarantine. I remember this. I think I This is the start of your potential DJ okay, career. Okay, so I, believe. I just totally like forgot about Fire <laughs> Island. Shout out to Fire Island whoever said that. Mm -hmm. Um Fire Island was a song that I wrote actually with lyrics mm -hmm. and I sang it. And it's go. about Fire wow. Island and I wrote it like I think in April or March or April, but it was you know, when I was definitely in my apartment for far too long. Were you just dreaming about Fire myself. Island? Or so, had well, you gone everybody to Fire was talking Island about Fire recently? Island. Like, I've mm -hmm. never been to Fire Island. So that's the whole hook of the song is I've never been to Fire Island, but I want to go. So it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same here. If anybody has a invite or a ticket to Fire I think, Island, I think I know some people. Okay. I think Chris might know. All right. Um, Sounds how good. to get to Fire Island? We're being told to um, come in closer. <laughs> but yeah, so Fire Island is actually yeah. That's my first song that I guess that I wrote completely with words, and mm -hmm. it I I'm I I'm like afraid to put it out because it's I don't know. Well, that's what we're doing here tonight. We're overcoming our fears. This is all new territory. We're all a little bit nervous and on edge, but that's why we're doing it because that's what this year is going to be about. Yes. Just trying new things, getting out there, getting putting yourself out there. out there, and connecting. Connecting. <laughs> so um, quick word, we are um, coming at you safely. Uh, we're all tested up, COVID rapid tested. Um, for anybody wondering, um, the studio has been taking extreme precaution and doing it very smart. I'm very proud of the team here at Moon um, for killing it. Uh, shout out Josh back there in the control room on the decks. Um, Ryan over here on the cameras. Hannah up there on the Instagram Live and the amazing game prompts. Um, Set sign. And we'll be back here next Friday at 7 p.m. Final plug, Molly. Where can we listen to your music, or um, where do you want us to go to support you? Anywhere you stream it, you can you can Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. Um, really, just to get you listening. Um, just search for Molly Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yep. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you guys for thank joining. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next week. See you next week with James Shepard and Daphne. Always. Woo. All right. <laughs> <laughs>